Chef Champion here to take you on a culinary journey I promise you've never been before. I'm here to help mold you, shape you, motivate you, and most importantly, inspire you into cooking like a champion. I'm Chef Champion, but my friends call me Ace. Welcome to the new age of culinary learning. Cook like a champion on this great station. We're back at Amon Green's house. He had to take off for a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and get cooking because I gotta have that meal ready for when he gets back. So what I'm making today is a stuffed chicken marsala, and we're gonna be stuffing it with some um, Nooski's Applewood Cherry Bacon and Shoalsburg Creamy Delicious Pepper Jack Cheese. So I started off with the regular chicken breast, and basically what you wanna do is you wanna pound the front end of the chicken breast because you want it to have an even cooking. So by pounding it off, it also allows me to get a good butterfly. So, and I know some restaurants when they do butterfly, they actually cut the chicken breast in half, but that can tend to be a little bit messy when you go to slice it. So make sure you have a fillet knife. I'm using nice cut cold cutlery. There's a reason why there's a different knife for each job. So I'm just gonna put my hand right over the chicken breast and kind of just saw right in the middle. And notice that my body is low because I wanna see where I'm cutting. I wanna try and make it as even as possible. So then we're gonna open that up just like a butterfly. Take the knife and split it right down the middle just a little bit so it opens up. You can use a mallet or you can just take your hand and just pound it just a little bit because you want it a little bit flatter. The flatter it is, the better it's gonna roll. All right, and you see how it has that pretty side and I call that the not so pretty side. The not so pretty side is the side you wanna run first. So the first thing I wanna do is take some of this cherry wood apple bacon. I'm just gonna lay that there like so. Right. Now we're gonna take this Schulzberg pepper jack cheese and obviously using a cheese knife so it cuts right through very nicely. And it's just gonna make a couple of slices, probably about three. And you can play around with it. Do you have to use pepper jack? No, you really don't. You can use whatever you want. But I like pepper jack just because it gives it a little bit of a bite. I'm just gonna lay that in. Just like that. So now what you wanna do is you actually wanna roll it. So I'm just gonna roll this as tight as possible. The tighter you roll it, the more it's gonna stay strong and stay firm. There you go. So now it's actually stuffed, as you can see. So the next thing we wanna do is just go ahead and get our oil started. And I'm using a healthy avocado oil because I try and be a little bit healthy, you know, and this has a 520 degree smoke point. So for those of you guys at home that love to use olive oil, olive oil works, but it tends to burn up on you. It only has about a 320 degree smoke point. So with that chicken breast, I wanna make sure I season it well. So I want a little bit of kick, so I'm gonna use a Cajun season. By all means, if you wanna use salt and pepper, use whatever you wanna use. And I'm gonna season that nicely. Notice how I always season high above the product so it gradually rains on it. You want even distribution. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of basil. Let it rain. There you go. And I'm just gonna turn that over, season it well. And you guys notice when I'm seasoning, I'm seasoning heavenly, you know? Please make sure you do that. Some of those re recipes where they just say, oh, a little pinch of this and a pinch of that, you're really asking for some pretty bland food and we don't want that. We want it full of flavor. So literally, as you guys can see that there's actual smoke coming out of the um, skillet, that's what you want. You want it to smoke. And as you see how that seam is, that seam is actually the side that you want to sear first, just like so. All right. So there's really not a lot of time. On the recipe, I do give you a time. I want to say you want to sear it about a minute, minute and a half on each side. As you see, it's round, so you want to make sure you turn it four times so you get a good sear on all four sides. So while that's going, we'll go ahead and get started um, on our vegetables that we're gonna use to make our Marsala cream sauce. Proper way to hold the knife, three fingers curl curled underneath the handle, index finger is actually on the blade. And then you're just gonna run it across the steel a couple of times. Okay. I'll check that, and as you see, it's yeah, it's starting to get that nice sear right there. That's how you know to go ahead and turn it. Definitely don't want to burn it because we're going to be finishing in the oven, combination cooking method. 
And then notice my motion as I'm cutting, I'm pretty much just rocking the blade back and forth. That's pretty much my standard motion. Once I get close to my fingertip, I'm just gonna fold that over just like so. And then we'll just fast forward and speed it up a little bit. This is almost done, so I'm gonna throw that in the oven, let that finish cooking, and we're gonna take a quick break, come right back, and I'll show you how to make this delicious Marsala cream sauce. All right, welcome back. Let's check on our chicken over here. You see how it's got a nice sear on all four sides? You're good to go. We're just gonna take that off, put that on a non-stick baking pan, and then before you put it in the oven, you just wanna drizzle a little bit of that Marsala over that. That's gonna keep the chicken breast nice and moist. And then we're just gonna throw that in the oven. I have my oven on a low, probably about 325. We're gonna bake that off for probably about eh, 15, 20 minutes. All right, so now we have just a little bit of oil. I don't need all of that, so I'm gonna get rid of some of that. We'll go ahead and add in our mushrooms first. You always wanna start with the ones that take the longest. So obviously the mushrooms take the longest, so we're gonna throw those in there. And then now we're gonna make, uh, cut up some shallots. I'm a bit of a crybaby, forgive me, so. You know, I got these onion gargles that I got at Cook's Corner, keep me from crying. So an easy way to cut an onion or a shallot is just make small slices. Turn that at a 90 degree angle and slice all the way through. So essentially, really all I'm doing is just slicing and slicing. But I love shallots, really, really good in the sauces. So then the last thing that we want to add is the garlic because garlic should always be added in last. I got this little garlic roller. Also, I picked up from my little local kitchen store. And I just want to roll the garlic just like that. And it actually just peels the garlic. And I know some of you guys are out there wondering, chef, chef, can I use the, the garlic in the jar? Yeah, you can use the garlic in the jar. Is it fresh? No, it's not even close to being fresh. I always like just using fresh garlic, cut through it so you get all the, all the nice health benefits. Um, garlic is extremely good for you. Uh, excellent for your blood pressure. Man, it's good for your stamina, I'm just saying, just saying. So I wanna make as thin slices as possible. Turn that at a 90 degree angle, just like everything else. Slice it again. And, and funny story, actually when I'm cutting, I'm actually tightening up my stomach muscles. Um, it's an awesome core workout. Will you get a six pack from this? No, but it has just helped you ground yourself. So remember that. So now that I have that rough chop, I'm just gonna give it a chop. Always making sure I bring it up into a nice pile. And then we're gonna throw that garlic right into there. Just want to give this a nice little mix. All right, now comes the fun part. So traditionally I would use some rum or some whiskey, but I got this nice Van Drastic premium vodka right here in Wisconsin. We're gonna use that to make a pretty much like a vodka cream sauce. So whenever you're flambéing, always remember this is optional too as well. Pull it away from the gas stove, add in the vodka right to the edge and then just kind of let it sit there for a minute so the vodka kind of gets warmed up just a little bit. And then we're just gonna tilt that into the fire just like so. All right, put that over there. Give that a nice little mix. So the alcohol is just reducing down, it's pretty much infusing the mushrooms in the shell, it's giving it that nice vodka flavor. So now I'm gonna add in some Marsala wine. Just a little bit, just a little bit. And the last thing that I wanna do is add in some of my chicken stock. So what I did with this chicken stock is I just reduced it by half. And when I mean reduced by half, that means if you end up with two cups, you end up with a half a cup. So basically we're just evaporating all the water, getting all that, getting all that water content out there so we have a nice concentrated flavor. So the last thing that we want to add is just a little bit of heavy whipping cream. Just a little bit, just to say I put it in there. Give that a nice little mix. All right. And that's almost done. We'll go ahead and get our garnish. And with parsley, just make sure you remove all the stems out of it. And what I like to do is I like to just ball it up really, really nice and tight and just slice right through it. So 
now you have nice, nice little parsley. And if you want this dried, you can just lay this out in parchment paper, put it on top of your refrigerator, and the next day it'll be nice and dry for you. So this is pretty much almost done. What you want to do too as well, because this is a larger batch, make you a little cornstarch slurry. I'm not a fan of water, so we're gonna make a vodka slurry. How about that? You ever heard of that before? I know you haven't, because I just made it up just right now. There you have it, vodka slurry, courtesy of Chef Champion. Okay, so it thickens up nicely. Whenever you're using a slurry, just use a little bit at a time just to try and see how it thickens up, because you might not have to use all that the recipe calls for. So the last thing that we want to do is add in some of this delicious pure Wisconsin butter. And I always like to use salted butter because salted butter just gives it that nice little tang that you need. So I'm going to let this finish cooking. We're going to take a quick break and then we come back. We're going to actually put it together and then I'm going to show you how to make one of my new recipes. Cherry Delight Tiramisu with white chocolate. We'll be right back. Welcome back. So as you see, our Marsala cream sauce is thickened up very nicely. You know, uh, obviously if it's a little bit too thick, which this looks a little bit too thick, you can always just thin it out with a little bit of cornstarch. Yes, you can add a little bit more of that vodka to it, but you want to be careful with that vodka. You don't want it to taste like a shot. So that's pretty much done. We're going to go ahead and get our chicken out the oven, see if that's done. All right, looks done to me. So the last little finishing technique is all that juice is left in the chicken. We're gonna pour that right into the skillet. There you go. And then we're gonna take that chicken breast and let that rest. You always want your chicken to rest for at least five minutes so all the juices settle in. Take our chicken breast. And I always like to leave half of it intact, so we're just gonna make some slices at an angle. Oh my goodness, you see how you can actually see the actual cheese melting with the bacon? Mm, some good stuff right there. A Couple more slices. I'm gonna leave just a little bit of the chicken because you don't want to cut it all too much for them. Give them a little bit of work. I'm just gonna layer that just like so. Take my green beans, add that to there. There you go. And then take some of that Marsala cream sauce and spoon that right over the chicken breast. Oh my goodness. You make this for your family, you make this for your neighbors, they're gonna love you to death. All right, so I told you we were gonna get started on that tiramisu. I'm just gonna clean this up right quick and then we'll jump right into that. Leave that over here, make sure mine gets that 